Okay, I've got another little quick project I'm doing. I've got to make some pretty accurate bends. And so like I showed in the last video, these are my adjustable backstops. You know this, so they slide in and out that direction. Um, I usually put these one, two, three blocks on here um, because they can kind of reach up close. They can reach up over the top of the die if needed. Um, and they're adjustable up and down. And then the whole, the whole assembly can slide down these tracks. And then, so it's got this pretty tight fitting, um, I don't know, little gripper that reaches around that rail. And down on the bottom, there's an adjustable standoff. So I can, I can run that bolt in and out basically to level this. I shouldn't say level, level's not really the right word, but basically to square this to the machine so that, you know, if, if this was crooked, then this vertical surface would not be vertical to the die set. It would be tipped away. So that way, you know, with that adjuster, I can um, make sure that this is a consistent distance over its height from the center line of the dies. So that's the adjusters. You know, they're, you know, obviously fully, fully mechanical, you know, manual mechanical. You, you just got to put them where you want them and then uh, you tighten the bolts down. Um, they got a pretty good reach from, you know, basically zero to about two feet. And depending on the accuracy of the parts, um, you know, kind of depends on how I measure them out. But these parts I'm doing today um, need to be pretty accurate, so I'm setting them with this. And so I basically use from this edge to the end there, and I set it off of this surface because this is exactly two inches wide. And so my center line of the die is one inch from here. And then where, and then where the caliper actually touches, where the, you know, the die is touching down here an inch back. So I basically, I have to add two inches to my adjustment or to my measurement. So my measurement I'm shooting for on this part is one inch and eight thousandths. So I have this set at three inches and eight thousandths, you know, to account for this extra inch and then this extra inch from here to here. So basically I, I put this on here and then I, you know, I make sure that it's even because there is a tiny bit of wiggle in that, in that slot. So I make sure it's even all the way across. And then I'll do, depending on how long the part is, this part's about 18 inches long that I'm bending. And so, you know, I'm, I'm gonna use both of these. But still, I make sure that it's absolutely straight on both of them so you don't end up just hitting one edge and throwing off the measurement. So that's basically how I set it up. Um, Works pretty good. You know, it's obviously slow in comparison to, you know, a CNC machine or something, but um, just is what it is. Um, but the good thing is it's, uh, it's reliable. I know, you know, there's no, there's no backlash in some lead screw or anything I've got to worry about. If I set it, it stays. Um, and again, like it's slow, but it's uh, it's a lot better than uh, not having something like this at all. So, um, so my I'm just bending a piece of like 20 gauge. Um, it's a pretty accurate channel. Um, I basically only have one set of top punches right now, which is kind of a bummer. Um, this is a uh, 78 thousandths radius. 
a little bigger than what I really need for that sheet metal, but it's fine. And then the bottom die will be this three quarter inch bottom that I've got. And again, that's the hard part with having a press break is you burn up so much money in tooling. Um, I don't have a whole lot, but luckily with the majority of stuff I do between sheet metal and, you know, three sixteenths is really kind of the, my main bread and butter materials I work with. Um, I've got, I've got enough stuff for that. Um, and occasionally when I need to do something crazy, I'll, I'll just make a die. But that's basically the setup. Um, once I get this part bent up, I'll, uh, I'll show you what I'm building. So I figured I'd show this too. This is the part I'm making. And so something I do, um, so I was given uh, an inside dimension of the Z channel from inside of that leg to the inside of this leg. And so what I do is I draw the part out as I want it to be finished. And then I go in and I, I put my radius of my top die in here. And then, you know, this is the material thickness. Um, let me. And I'll basically extend these lines of where the uh, radius starts and stops. And then I'll basically draw a circle from this point, this intersection point, to the to the middle of the material thickness. Um, the middle isn't exactly the right spot to measure for steel, but especially on something this thin, it's it's plenty close enough. I believe the actual correct um, neutral radius mount is 44% of the thickness um, for mild steel. But that's, you know, that's really uh, pretty, pretty darn uh, close enough <laughs> to go 50%. Um, so then I take this, this thickness or this length of the center neutral radius. And then, you know, with, with that distance, then, you, you know, you basically need to set your backstops from here, this leg plus half that plus half of this length of this radius. So you basically imagine it's almost like this, this point here would be the press where it's, where it's going to be hitting the metal. Because that, that, you know, this is, this is called the bend allowance. So it's how much material is actually being bent. Um, and so you've got to know that in order to get your legs the right length. You know, it, let's say it called out to have a one inch leg and you set your, your stops at an inch. You're actually going to be a little under an inch in length once it's done because you lose some in this radius. So I know there's charts and probably faster ways of doing it, but this is just the way, you know, I, I'm self-taught in most of this stuff. So this is just the way I figured out how to do it to get accurate parts. <clears throat> and if you take your time and do this, um, stuff comes out right on the money. Like it's, it's not hard to get accurate channels and stuff like that. You just gotta, you just gotta know this stuff is, uh, um, just knowing how much material is taking up in the bend. So that's the way I do it. It's a little time consuming, but it's faster than making the parts twice. So I'm going to get back into the shop and uh, get these parts put up. Okay. So here's the part. It's just a simple Z channel. And like I said, I just slowly this is really hard to do with one hand, but slowly worked my way up to it. So it's pretty much right on the money. Um, and I got my uh, my distance from here to here, what, where it's supposed to be. So it worked out good. Um, and again, like, it's like so many things you hear about where... Uh, you know, the most important work is in the prep. So, you know, in this one's case, the prep was the layout. So making sure 
that the backstops are set correctly. Um, you know, spending that extra, probably took me 10 minutes to do that drawing and get those dimensions figured out. And, uh, you know, especially in a case like this where I have one piece of material to get the, get the correct part. You know, if I had uh, just winged it and goofed this up, then I'd be running to the steel supply place um, to buy a, a piece of sheet metal that I don't even need. You know, or, or pay to have this exact size sheared. So, so that's the way I do it. Um, and I'm sure the professional press spray guys probably can do it faster. Um, like I said, I'm self-taught with most of this stuff, so I don't know that I know the right way of doing it, but this is the way I do it. And this is something that's kind of cool to have. Um, you can just print these off of, you know, I just Googled this and print it off, but this is a um, press brake tonnage chart. And so basically you've got your material thickness and then your V-die width for your bottom V-die, and then it'll give you how many tons of force it takes per linear foot of part. And the shaded box is like your sweet spot. And then it gives you values either way, which is pretty cool. Um, so I do a fair bit of bending with 3 16 And so it's sweet spot die would be inch and a half. Um, but my die is an inch and an eighth. And so, And so it's 16.9 tons per foot to bend 3 16 with a one and an eighth die. So this is where you can see it's, you need basically a special die for every uh, thickness of material. And that's where uh, <laughs> owning a press spray gets really expensive. So I keep that, I keep that handy, just it helps to one is just a quick reminder to know what size die I should be using if I've got to do something weird and make a die or, you know, I do have a friend with some stuff I can borrow here and there. It's kind of cool too is, is with this chart, um, in the past I've found bending some pretty big parts of kind of the limit to the machine and, you know, by the thickness and whatever, it basically told me how many tons the machine was putting out and so that's where I come to the number of this thing is about a 40 ton machine. It could probably do a little more, but at 40 tons, it was really grunting. Um, and like I said, with the, the math, this should be, you know, with the power of the jacks and the mechanical advantage, it should be 64 tons, but obviously uh, these uh, Chinese made jacks were a little, uh, little optimistic in their rating. So that's how I uh, that's how I set this thing up. Um, you know, it's a little finicky in the first part to get all your angles perfect, but like I showed in that last video, once it's set, it holds that toler. I mean, it holds a really tight tolerance. Um, I have run it a couple times with a uh, with a dial indicator in here. You know, from part to part to part, and um, two thousandths seems to be the number. It really. It, it stays within a two thousandths range pretty darn good, which is pretty cool to see because, you know, I don't know. These are just some switches I found. I don't, I have no idea what their, what their accuracy is or their repeatability, but it seems to be good enough. So that's it for this video. Um, Next time I have something unusual or uh, or different, I'll uh, I'll show that as well. Thanks for watching.